Good afternoon. What a privilege it is here! It is to be here with my associate Vanessa Pizzuto and Dr. Daniel Duda, the newly elected president of the Trans-European Division. We are here at the Youth Congress in Latte in Finland, and it's just a delight to be here. And in the background, you can see the participants engaging with each other, enjoying each other's company, and we're just taking some time out to talk with Dr. Daniel about the meaning of Congress, why we have it, what it does for our young people throughout the uh, Trans-European Division and the Euro, uh, Euro uh, and the Inter-Euro Inter Europe <laughs> Division. Forgive me, I remember from times past. But we, we're going to have some good conversation about where we go from here as a church and look forward. Daniel, it's a privilege to talk to you. Thank we're you. We're going to enjoy this conversation. We know we are. And the first thing I want to say to you is 50 days. 50 days in this role, in this ministry. How's it going? I mean, it's still too close to evaluate it meaningfully. Um, most of the uh, activities were some which were planned before the GC session. So I went to the Netherlands for the union-wide diversity rally. I went to Poland for the union-wide camp meeting. So events uh, which are busy take and sap your energy. But of course, uh, certain things that you need to do in the office, emails and the new issues uh, that you need to deal with. So, so, so far, so good, right? So far, so good. <laughs> I'm still enjoying it, and <laughs> other people need to comment if they still enjoy it. <laughs> Feet just under the table. And, and we're looking forward to working with you and uh, going on, the, on this journey for the next three years. But here we are at Congress. What are your impressions so far? I'm very impressed. Uh, as I said in uh, my opening message, I love youth congresses. So every time I can go to one, so uh, I certainly choose to go there. So I'm very glad that uh, because of my position I can attend. Because of my age group normally I would not go to a youth congress. <laughs> I get inspired by the energy, by enthusiasm of young people, uh, their willingness to commit, to change. Uh, and what they do for Jesus and for church, uh, you know, it's a different generation, but they love Jesus, they are committed to God, and uh, to see them enjoying themselves, being stretched and being blessed, it's a joy for my heart. You told a story Monday night of how you went to your first Youth Congress. Tuesday. Tuesday night. Yes. Sh tell, it, tell it to our audience. In 1978, there was a... EUD Youth Congress in Lausanne in Switzerland. I was 19 years old and uh, because my parents went in 1969 to the World Youth Congress in Zurich, Switzerland and they always mentioned it as, as a spiritual highlight. So as a young teenager I always dream, dreamt if only once I could go to a Youth Congress. And so I made an application for the exit visa to travel outside of a communist country. And I prayed about it and uh, to be honest, I did not believe I will get that permission because I didn't do my compulsory military service yet. But so when I got the permission to travel for 10 days to Switzerland, you know, to go there by train and back, I just couldn't believe and uh, couldn't believe my luck and the fact that I was able to go there. But once I was there, I understood why. I have heard a presentation by the division Ministerial Association Secretary, uh, Heinz Vogel, about the dignity of pastor's office. It's interesting that the Youth Congress, you had a speech about why pastoral job is important and the dignity it brings. And of course, I have heard the Sabbath sermon of the division president on Isaiah 6, whom shall I send, who will go? And I knew that God wants me to be a pastor. I wanted to be either a translator, because many people say I have a gift with languages, or I wanted to be a pediatrician. That, uh, yeah, because of my heart, <laughs> I can see now that it would not be a good choice because I can't stand blood and, <laughs> <laughs> and I would be really hurt by all these chil uh, small children suffering, etc. Probably it would not be good for me. But after that Congress, I knew that God wants me to be a pastor, so I came back and told the leaders of the union, I feel that God is leading me to be a pastor, and um, what do you advise? I am here, available. And so it completely changed my life. I would not be where I am today if it were not for a youth Congress. And of course, uh, seeing the young people, I, I come from a small church, 40-member church. There were, what, 10, 12 of us? Um, by the time I was 16, I was a youth leader. 
So this was a different league, this was different music, different level of presentations. And of course, I could see the value that I learned German in the secondary school because, of course, there was no translation into Czech or Slovak. So it was all that thanks to the fact that at the secondary school, as a 19-year-old boy, I, I was able to understand German enough. I understood what the Congress and the messages were all about. So we've got this theme of this conference, Vanessa, unplugged, and I'm still trying to work plug, out what they're plug trying to... Plug, plug in, in, that's right, exactly. <laughs> unplug to the noise, plug right, into plug Jesus, in. right. yes. So can we examine that theme for a few moments about uh, what we're trying to say and how this generation are so fixed to this, and, and some of us are a little older as well, okay? And how this is a new dynamic in the 21st century for our spirituality and how it affects our spirituality. Um, what, what do you make of the theme and uh, the relevance of it? I think it's an excellent theme. Uh, we need to commend the organizers that they find something that is relevant to this generation, that has a deep uh, spiritual message, because yes, uh, you need to unplug, and you need to plug into the right source. And uh, yes, in some sense it's a little bit worrisome how surgically connected they are to all those devices. On the other hand, uh, you don't expect anything else. If you want to survive in times like this, you have to be part of that. And the social media, it's an important culture, but if you don't manage it well, it can uh, kill not only your spirituality, but your social life, your love life. <laughs> your I like that you're saying manage it well, because often what happens is there's a kind of fear to new technology. Kind of, I wonder whether your parents feared the technology you loved when you were growing up, right? And now you see it as, no, but it's super important, you know? So I love that. We need to learn to manage it and manage yes. it well. That and, and there's always something about the religious people that they are scared of new technology right and yeah. they see it as devil's instrument uh, and uh, they try to to deal with it by outlawing you know forbidding but that's not the solution exactly. the solution is to manage it well I mean I can give you a good example uh, in the family I'm a son of a pastor but growing up in the uh, 60s and 70s we didn't have a TV at home because of course it was devil's box <laughs> you know until George Wanderman said actually we can use it for preaching the gospel but I remember as a late teenager when I was at the university age how difficult it was for me, once I had no parental supervision, to find boundaries. Exactly. What is it that I watch? What is good for me? How much I watch? Which is the things that I choose not to watch? And it was just because I was not exposed to it. By forbidding it, outlawing it, it was not helpful to me. And I remember, you know, I struggled as 19, 20 year old with things which could have been sorted when I was 14, 16, if there was a more balanced approach. Wow, thank you for that. Can we unpack that just a little bit more about the whole issue of um, engagement with culture, or rejecting culture, or discerning culture? Often we get mixed messages in church life. For some, we must run to the hills. For others, there is no filter which says anything goes. You know what I'm trying to say? Sure, and of course, uh, this is something that we struggle with uh, in uh, the Western uh, countries. So we live in individualistic society. So your personal satisfaction, your job satisfaction, your relationships satisfaction is the most important thing under the sun. While in other parts of the world, it's more community culture. Mm -hmm. And so we live in the Western individualized society. We are Protestants, you know, Protestantism is about your standing before God, not my father, not my mother, not my priest. It's me before the Lord, you know. And of course, Adventism with its uh, emphasis on investigative judgment, you know, they might be discussing your case right now. It's incredibly individualistic. And so if it's not balanced with the biblical message of community, God exists as a community of persons. God puts us into community so that we can bless one another, enhance you see things that I don't see. Vanessa can be instrumental to me, and hopefully I can be to her as well, because uh, all of us have blind spots. So, yes, you, you take this message, uh, you know, of running away from the society, which you get from a distorted uh, understanding of uh, certain inspired passages, but you don't get it from a balanced view of reading the Gospels where Jesus sends these disciples into a community. Whatever happened in Jerusalem needs to travel into new communities. 
But I think I heard you just say that the way to help us discern is actually to hold the community, to, to be part of the community that holds you accountable. Is that what I, yes. what I heard? Yes, and this is where the young generation can be very helpful to us. Because yes, uh, some of them are uncritical in their embracing of the culture, but uh, because they are immersed in it, they can help those of us who are from different culture to understand better the world in which we live, and that's where they can make their contribution to the church life and to oh, us. Oh, I love that. Can can I can I become that? I love that. That's the way young people can help us. That's so beautiful and so humble. Daniel, where are the places? The the instances in which young people have this voice, you know, to say, actually, this is what I want to bring. This is how I want to help. Yes, and that's a very good question, uh, Vanessa. And I'm sorry to say we are not doing well as a church in this. Now, we need a lot of discernment because uh, for young people, for these millennials, the important things are action and uh, being instrumental in change. And if there is no action, if there is no change uh, taking place, you know, at work we solve this in 10 minutes. How come that you guys are discussing it for 10 years and there is no action? <laughs> I mean, I'm out of here because uh, this is not a place for me. How do we create a space and an environment where their voice can be heard, where their perspectives can be taken seriously? On the other hand, we don't frustrate them unnecessarily with the fact that the church is an ocean liner. Let's face it, it's not a ski jet that you turn around. You know, for so many of these young people, and I see it also in ministry, their life had this huge U turn. You know, I was going in this direction, then Jesus, I met Jesus, and my life made this huge U turn, and now I'm going in that direction, and then they say, oh, as an expression of my thankfulness, I want to devote my life to ministry, I'm going to be a pastor. Then you train them for five years, they get the master's degree, come to the first church, and they say, guys, why are you not changing? If my life made this U-turn, how come that... Uh, <laughs> no, the church is changing. Look at it, it's different today than it was when we were young 50 years ago or 20 years ago. Just some of us say, what a pity that it's changing, and some of us say, praise the Lord, it's changing. But how do we find the place so that we don't frustrate them with the process beyond their tolerance, yet we hear what they have to say about their perspective on the culture, on how you express commitment to Jesus in these uh, times and in this society? That is beautiful. I, I don't necessarily have the answer. Do, do say. Now my kids are going to express their Adventism a very different way to what I do. And so have I got the patience, the tolerance, the love to do that and, and the time that it takes to do that. And so I find that as a typical example of where the church should be. Can we cope with their change? Can we cope with their um, differences, their understandings and still be faithful Adventists? And it, once again, it depends on your understanding of the body of Christ. So if it's a community where we enrich one another, then hopefully, yes, we can and we should. Now, if it's me and my sweet Jesus, then, of course, the way the Spirit speaks to me and the way I expressed it in uh, my culture, in my generation, that's the only way that Jesus approves, uh, and then everybody should do the same. But look, look at the Bible. I mean, each generation needs to find their own way of expressing their commitment. God has no grandchildren. Yep. Because each generation needs to find their way how you experience the relationship with God and how you express it in the environment in which you live. And that's why, yeah. So the youngsters are gonna go home from Congress in a couple of days time. They're gonna go back to their church and they're gonna go full of vision and passion and they may, in some places, come up against a wall because the, while the uh, folk back home will be thrilled that they've had a wonderful time, Yep, you have your wonderful time, but don't bring it back here. But what should they do? What, what wisdom can we give to them and, and, and to the wider church? You know, what, what is the way forward? Because we, as you know, we've been on this journey for a long time and these are same old issues that never seem to, as I like to say, we never seem to be able to crack the nut on it. Uh, what, what's the way forward? 
Uh, as we say in counseling, complex problems don't have simple solutions. And uh, that served me well, <laughs> both in pastoral <laughs> ministry and in helping people. So uh, to expect that now we crack the nut and from uh, uh, 15th of August 2022, everything, and they live happily ever after. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sure. it's unrealistic. Uh, yes, we need to find a way. What is it that uh, is essential and that can change without uh, uh, sacrificing the advent identity of Adventism? Where is the present truth? W what are the values that we need to keep and which are the things that can be easily changed, discarded, uh, altered, improved, upgraded, where it just helps other people to express their commitment, their faithfulness and their relationship with God in a way that is enriching to all of us. How can we use uh, intergenerational worship mm. so that young people are more involved in the life of the church? It was interesting for me talking to young people, how many of them say that the music is something that they appreciate Absolutely. so much about the Congress. Absolutely. And I was talking to you earlier, something that really impressed me, and I think maybe this is one of the keys. I was talking to the people who are doing the music, preparing the music, the van leader, and he said to me, we actually were looking to find a middle ground with our music. Okay. And I thought, good. wow, the intentionality of, I'm not going to do just what I like, because we have a variety of people here. I'm yes. going to look for the middle ground so we can, with music, bring people together. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a way to do that in church, that and, intentionality. And they did an amazing job. I mean, I have attended uh, Valencia, I have attended uh, Novi Sad, I was in Munich, and I have attended congresses before that. But I think this is the first time that we don't have a significant group of people complaining. Why did we come to the Youth Congress if we have to listen to music like this? Which is incredibly childish and immature. I mean, there are other things where you can be blessed, the, uh, the Congress, but they found a good compromise so that basically most people are happy with the band and the music and they say, this is a highlight of my spiritual experience. Of course, praise God, there are those who say, oh, I came because of the sermons or because of the speakers, uh, you know, the um, workshops uh, and uh, rubbing shoulders with other young people, you know, the sauna, the... Uh, the Olympics and other things, uh, and of course, uh, connecting, it's, it's yeah. a big thing for young people. But the fact that we found a compromise that it does not need to be an issue that we fight about. And it on will, a it will difficult take some, one, yeah. on music, which it, tends to be difficult. It will take some education, so education of young people to understand why certain people come from certain perspective, to why this is so important to them, and the education of the older generation to say, guys, is it worth fighting if this is what brings and keeps these young people in our churches? You know, I just remember w one uh, old sister saying, you know, if this type of music keeps people at church, I don't care. It's for them, not yes. for me. <laughs> okay. yeah. Can I shift the conversation just a little to the issue of being a young Adventist in Europe? And even though you, your church may be a good church where you have quite a, a, a fair-sized and organized youth group, you still feel alone at school, at college, at university, because of your identity as an Adventist. Have you got any wisdom about how to survive? Uh, and of course, this, this uh, Congress is, 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 is to help that story that you're, that you're not on your own, you're part of something bigger. And it, uh, that's why it's so important, and that's why I don't understand uh, so many of the fields which uh, have only symbolic attendance. I mean, if, if you are in a small church, what you see on Sabbath morning at 11 o'clock, it's not representative of Adventism. And especially at this age, you need to rub shoulders and see there are 3,000 of us. There are so many young people who are like me, and there are so many young people who love Jesus equally, pray to the same Jesus, and who are a little bit different than me, and they are not a threat to me. Yeah. So there's more than one way to express your Adventism. So that's why I think these events uh, are so important, uh, because they give a boost to young people. What you see on Sabbath morning is not necessarily the type of Adventism you would identify with, or you feel that, oh, I should commit my life to this, but it, at events like this, you understand 
Jesus, Christianity, Adventism has more to offer than what I see on a typical Sabbath morning in my local church. And I need to get this broader perspective. And we, as a strategic uh, mission, are saying that discipleship is important to, you, to your walk, walk with Christ. Um, evangelism is the mission, discipleship is the journey. And these people here are on a journey, as yes. we all are. How are we going to try and help them over the next few years in their, in their spiritual growth? And this is the, the, the educating people for discipleship, to see that it's a journey, it's not a process, it's not that you arrived, uh, that uh, the way you express your faith when you are eight years old is different than you express it when you are 18 years old. Somehow, I'm sure it must have been preached, but I didn't pick it up from children's stories. The underlying impression was always that the faith you have when you are 10 years old is the faith that you should have when you are 50 years old, which is not the case. There is a faith development. development, there is a journey, and there is growth. I mean, Christianity was first called the way. The metaphor, New Testament, the metaphor is walking, is, is moving forward. The Adventism is about the present truth. How do we express our commitment, our faith in God in times in which we live, in the culture that we live, which, of course, will be different in Papua New Guinea than in Sweden and, or in Serbia. So there is this variety. But it will take mutual education. It will take broadening of minds. It's interesting to see how in the Gospels, Gospels, Jesus is constantly trying to broaden the minds of his disciples and to show them, let me teach you something you didn't pick up in your Galilean village. You know? So a spirit of humility, on a journey, I want to discover Will more. Willingness to learn, realizing that what we don't know, it's much bigger than what we know. I was just going to say that, much bigger, God is much bigger and greater than we can possibly imagine. Mm. And of course, his spirit. Yes, and he has things to teach us, um, to quote Ellen White, many things to teach us, many, many to, <laughs> un to unlearn. <laughs> oh, <darn> <laughs> Absolutely, it's a journey of learning and unlearning, unlearning to make space for the new. And I think the, the message of the Congress was very well thought through in this aspect that you need to rest, you need to breathe, but ultimately you need to serve. Yeah. You know, that uh, the question to be asked at the last judgment is who else benefited from your religion? Because if you are the only one, then you didn't serve God. You didn't worship God, you just worship yourself. And in a consumer society where, in which we live in 21st century Europe, uh, whether European Union or Brexit, <laughs> <laughs> this is an important message. Who else is benefiting from your religion, from your Adventism, from your Christian experience? Because if it's only you, then you are worshiping yourself. You are not worshiping God. Thank you for that. So as we draw to a conclusion, we're 10 years from now. Where would you like these youngsters to be in church life? Some of them I would like to see as pastors who are creative. I am impressed with their creativity. And I think that's what our churches need because they will create a different environment for the new generation of young people. Uh, some of them who are already volunteers or working for the church will be uh, in positions of leadership. And some of them I want to see in professional life uh, with degrees from university in different areas of life, making a living impact on colleagues and reaching out to people that uh, you and I can't reach because the people will not take us seriously because uh, you are employed by the church, you are paid to say these things. But if you are a good biologist, if you are a good teacher, good physicist, good uh, whatever, you name it, you can, God can use you to reach out to people that uh, would not be reached otherwise. So I want them to see as committed professionals at the top of their game, yet committed to God and Adventism and making difference in the society of Europe in 2032. And some people, I love the maths, he's the maths. <laughs> just, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> and some people will be a little bit uncomfortable with what you just said, a little bit uncomfortable with thinking, wait a minute, why can't they all become pastors? This is the calling. You know what I mean? Like this, this beautiful picture of having people serving God in all walks of life. Why is that so important? I mean, the idea that all should become pastors, you didn't get that from reading the New Testament. <laughs> Ministry in the New Testament is based on spiritual gifts. So uh, we got this uh, thinking from massaging certain 19th century um, 
concepts of what is a dignified service to God or maybe yeah. medieval uh, yeah. concepts. So ministry in the New Testament is based on spiritual gifts. Yeah. And, uh, to be a housewife, to be a nurse, a to politician, be a, a politician, a scientist, a scientist, to be a writer, to be oh, yeah. a, a, clean, AV, a AV, yeah. AV people, you know. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and look at the amazing work the, the volunteers are doing. Oh Somebody my goodness, needs yes. to deal with those chairs. Somebody needs to distribute that food. Yeah. And it's equally holy as the one who preaches the sermon. We just all serve with different spiritual gifts. Oh, mm. thank you. And that's you. the New Testament teaching, that all spiritual gifts are on a horizontal level. Yeah. Paul says to Corinthians, because you put it uh, vertically, you think that some things are more important, but that's where you are sarkikos, you are fleshly. Mm. Because if you are spiritual, then you understand we are all serving with our spiritual gifts. Thank you, Daniel. And I want to see the church where everybody is serving with their spiritual gift. With talented writers, talented musicians, talented AV people, computer guys, and uh, people in science, making new discoveries. Daniel, thank you for the good conversation. We know, when we, we know that when we have a conversation with you, we don't want the conversation to end. But we've got to be disciplined. <laughs> so we're hoping that we can have these regular conversations with you and our listeners together and simply uh, um, just communicate with our members the values and the strategic aims of the Trans-European Division, not just for our sakes, but for everybody's sakes, including this generation of which we've been called to serve. And Absolutely. Thank you for your questions, for your services, and to you that you stay till the end and watch this long. That's right. Vanessa, would you close with prayer? Oh, sure, us? absolutely. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to expand our minds, to learn to think differently, to unlearn and make space for new. Thank you for people who see things differently, for the way they challenge us and the opportunity they give us. Uh, we ask that you bless the people who've been watching this interview today and that you continue to bless us as we serve you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. And if you want to learn more about the TED, about what we are doing, please make sure you check our newsletter. You can find more information on our website. Thank you. And goodbye from us for now. Bye.